In this week's video, I want to show you how to save hours of time each week by effectively outsourcing tasks to a virtual assistant using a team member board. Hi and welcome. I'm Andy, a real estate investor and coach. I help real estate investors to systemize their business so that they can free up time to work on what matters most. Outsourcing tasks to virtual assistants is a great way to free up your time, but if you don't put the right systems in place, you waste time trying to find out what people are working on, you miss deadlines because tasks were missed or blocked, and you lose confidence about outsourcing altogether. That's why today I'm going to go and show you in detail how the team member board works and how you can implement it yourself. Plus, I'll also share five top tips to help you get the most out of this system. Chapter markers are in the description, so if you want to skip around, then go ahead. But otherwise, let's get going. First up, I'm going to show you around the team member board to give you a bit of an idea about how it works. Now, I use Notion for this, but you can also use other tools like Asana or Trello. Um, so here we are, and it's um, in a Kanban board style. So we've got some various columns here. So backlog priority working on blocks to check and complete. And the way this works really well is that we can very easily see what the various statuses are of each of these different tasks. Backlog is for tasks that I may have created, but I'm not ready for one of the team members to start working on them yet. So there's a bit of a, uh, a store of ideas, I suppose. And you'll notice that in the backlog column, I've not actually assigned any due dates yet. Um, and the instruction to the virtual assistants is that if stuff's in this column, they don't start working on it. Um, so that's the backlog. We've then got priority. Um, and this is actually a list of the things that the various team members need to be working on at the moment. So we've got one for Rem and two for Feline, um, and they can see when the due dates are, who's assigned to it. Um, so that's what people are working on at the moment. When one of them actually starts working on it, they'll just grab their task and move it from priority uh, into working on. So they can literally just drag and drop. Um, and that's a really easy way for me to see um, what team members are working on without having to ask them. Um, and that's part of this system is that you do less work about work. It's less meetings, it's less uh, emails. Uh, I can just very quickly see what people are working on uh, in this system. Now, sometimes um, a team member may be working on something, but then they get blocked. Um, so for example, here, um, Feline is updating the website, but she's obviously come into a problem. Uh, and if I just click and open this task, uh, under comments, we can see that she said that she's been unable to download the pictures for the website. So I can quickly see what the problem is, go and sort that out, and then I'd move that back from blocked into priority. So Feline would then know, I'd leave a quick note, um, but she would know that that's now fixed and she can continue. And then when she starts working on it, it would then be moved back into working on. Next up is to check. Uh, so let's say that uh, emailing the estate agents um, had happened. So Rem had done that work and he was happy with it. Then what he would do is change that to myself um, just to say that I was now um, to check it. And he could just put a quick note in to say that I needed to review what he'd done. Um, so change who's it is, who it's assigned to and what his current status is. Uh, and then finally, when I'm happy, so let's say that I've reviewed this deal analysis, I'm happy with it, and I can just move this into the complete um, pipe, uh, into the column, uh, and then I'd probably actually just go and uh, take my name off it as well, uh, just so that we know that that's uh, all done. The real benefits of this is it's really quick and easy to see what the various status is for all these um, various tasks. Um, it's clear who's responsible for what. Um, we can also set priorities as well, depending on which task is uh, at the top. Um, so yeah, this is the uh, team tasks database uh, where we can see what everybody is working on. Okay, so we know how the board works. So now let me quickly go and show you how to create one of these uh, in Notion. If you use Asana or Trello, um, it'll be similar. Um, you just need to create the various headings um, and go and structure it in the same way, just using those tools, which I'm sure you know about. So to do this in Notion, we press the forward slash key uh, and then we want an inline database. I'll just type inline and then return. Uh, and this creates the basic form of a uh, table. Um, so let's just give it a name. So this is gonna be the team task uh, database uh, two. Um, the first column is gonna be our task name. So just for clarity, I'm gonna call that uh, task name. Uh, then we want to have a column, um, and this is gonna to correspond to these columns here. So this second column is currently a multi-select column. So I'm just gonna change that. So I'm just going to change it from multi-select to select, uh, and then I'm gonna change the name of it. And the name of this column will be status. So I'm just gonna type status in and return, uh, and there we go. And then we can see above, we've got these various column names. So I'm just gonna type these in here as options. So we've got backlog, 
Great, so I'm now going to created all of those uh, heading columns. Uh, we also want to have an assignee. So if I just type in here person, um, and then I'm going to call this assignee for who's responsible for actually doing the task. Uh, and one more column, which is going to be our date column. This is going to be our due date. So let's just call that due date and press return. Great. So this is the bare bones. You could obviously add in lots of different columns like a start date um, as well. Uh, you could attach it to projects um, if you're using a wider, bigger system. Um, but let's just keep this simple. Uh, of course, um, as with uh, Notion, I can just drag these around. So I may want to have the due date first. Um, but the main thing is that this is the wrong format. So if I right click onto table and I go edit view, I now want to select here and say that I'm going to change this layout to a board view. Um, there we go. I'm going to deselect show database uh, title because we don't want that. And you can see that these are actually now in uh, alphabetical order, which is not very helpful. So instead, I'm going to go uh, group by, which is status, and we can see that we've got the visible groups and they're all in this order. So all we need to do is grab the uh, six little docs and just go and reorder them. So we've got backlog is fine. Then we want the uh, priority is next. Then we've got um, uh, working on. So that's our next one. Then we've got blocked. Then we've got to check and then complete. And we've also got no status just in case any of these tasks accidentally weren't given a status. So we've reordered them. I can go and close that now. And we can see that we've got each of the columns here all in the right order. And that's when we can start adding our task. So task one um, and then task two, for example. One other quick thing is that if your tasks do have a similar format, uh, then you can go and use the little drop down here on the right hand side and add a new template. So maybe this is going to be a new task and every time the status will be backlog um, and perhaps you can have various sections. So there may be the uh, details and then there may be comments and there may be attachments. You can create a little template um, if I click off. Um, let's go and use the three dots here on the right hand side and set that as default uh, for all views. So now if I create a new task, for example, in working on, straight away it's called it new task. And if I open it, it's got the various bits in the body um, as well. So that's just a little way to save a bit of time is using a, a template um, for each of your tasks if there's a common format. If you're finding this video useful, please give it a thumbs up down below. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks. Earlier, I mentioned about five top tips to help you make the most out of this system. So here they are. Number one is review this system regularly. This system does not work if you only look at it once a week or if your virtual assistants only look at it once a week, for example. It needs to be a living, breathing state of play. So if something's blocked, you quickly jump on it, you throw it back to your virtual assistant, they can keep working on it. They've then finished it and they need you to check it. You may then check it and realize that something needs to go back to be redone. Um, so it's really important that it's continually reviewed and looked at um, to make the most out of this system. Number two is to make sure that every task goes into here. If you sort of dabble in this, but you've also got tasks in emails, you've got tasks on Slack um, and they're all over the place, this won't work because the problems of earlier, like knowing where various bits of work are, knowing what's blocked, um, will still be a problem. Um, you need to have everything in one place so that you have confidence in this system. Number three is to ensure that all communications about tasks is actually put into the tasks themselves. Because if you've got stuff in emails and instant message, messenger and WhatsApp, um, they're going to be all over the place. So it's going to be hard to track. But also it's difficult if different team members dive into the task if they're all working on something together. So instead, if there's a question about sending out landlord letters, just open it and then just put it into your comments section. Um, so here, for example, uh, send out landlord letters is uh, let me know um, which list to use. And then somebody else could say, um, I don't know, uh, city uh, one list from uh, Jan uh, 2023, for example, whatever it is. But each person can see what the comments are and what people are saying. Um, whereas if that was all over different messaging systems, it would just be chaos. All right. So keep all text and all communication about a task in the task itself. So number four is to have linked views for your different team members. So this team board we've got at the top, it's got different people in it. So Rem and Feline and myself, um, and it's in one database. So it's a bit um, all over the place because it's got all of the different tasks. But by using the really powerful Notion linked database views, um, you can see just individual people's tasks. So I've created one here for Rem. So this is just filtered by Rem's work. 
and then again I've got my own uh, just to see what each of us need to do so it's one database that linked views and you can put these uh, linked views throughout your workspace wherever works best for each of these people so make use of those. Fifth on the list is to set priority in this view so we can see that in priority feline has got two different tasks that have got a due date both of the 24th so we can just explain to Feline that the priority task is the one at the top. So if you just drag it, the blue line comes up and then let go. We can see the top one in priority out of these two tasks for the 24th is to create the investor marketing and then the reconciling accounts can happen a little bit later. So even within this view, you can very easily set priorities, but also update them. So if we also had, oh, we need to sort out the February finances, quickly I could move that to the top go and put a date in it. So let's set the date to be uh, again the 24th, but this is now the top. So we can see that we've moved in a new priority uh, for Feline. If you're doing things on email or uh, on uh, instant messenger, it's going to be so much more complicated to try and keep track of this. Whereas Feline can really easily see, all oh, right, okay, the top task, even though these have got the three dates, is the top priority and that's what needs to be worked on first. So that's how to outsource using a team member task board. It will save you so much time doing work about work and free you up to focus on the most important things. If you want to know more about what Notion can do for you in your own real estate business, then check out this video here and I'll see you in the next video. See ya.